we will discuss about one single service right now, which is CloudWatch. It doesn't mean that Amazon has or AWS has only one service. There are multiple, but this one is a very prominent one, which has very uh, ubiquitous presence all over AWS resources. So I will, I will, I will talk about that. Yes, cruise control that is coming up. Hurry, we will talk about it. We will discuss it. We will see how cruise control actually works. So we'll see that. Now let's move forward. The question comes why I should be monitoring. So wh what is the reason for somebody to monitor their infrastructure? Anyone, let me know your answers in chat. Why you think monitoring is important? Why company would invest time and money and resources in monitoring? What is your rationale behind it? Why you think monitoring is important? Anyone? To check utilization, why not? That your system is working appropriately. Yes, exactly. There's nothing impossible. Infra application, health status and trend, exactly. Performance to stay alert, exactly. Like if something is going wrong, I want to know about it. I don't want my customer to say, hey, Ashish, your website is not working. No, I want to be proactive in that. To make sure infrastructure and system fulfill business need. Yes, true. Sometimes to fine tune. Yes, we want to optimize the performance which we have taken or which we have implemented. Then to ensure that system are working as expected. Performance, health check and alert. Yes, exactly. Quality delivery. Yeah, I, I agree to that. So I, I'll summarize some of the things which is there. Utilization, health status and performance. Yes, performance. Am I getting the performance I'm expecting from a system? I may think my system is responding in millisecond, but it may be taking minutes. So we need to check that. Second could be utilization. Am I re reaching to the all the full capacity of my resources or is there still some room available or I have under provision or over provision? I want to know that and that's why I would be monitoring. Then comes health. Is it working fine? Is it working as expected? Is it having any issue? So that's why I would monitor and then Probably for security too. I want to know, hey, how many bad attempts happen? Was somebody able to go to the part of application which was not expected? Has there any attempt of hacking into my application? So these all are the features why we would be using monitoring. So these are some of the example. Your use case may be different, little bit different, but the concepts remain the same. We want to be aware about what is happening in terms of performance, utilization, health and security. That's why we monitor. And the service we are going to discuss today is CloudWatch. CloudWatch is a very commonly used service for most of the monitoring monitoring options in AWS. We have other services too, but CloudWatch is a easy to start and has a nice integration with most of the services. So what CloudWatch is, it's a monitoring and observability service. What is observability? James will talk about it, so I'll not touch on that, but let me focus on the monitoring part of it. CloudWatch can do a lot of things for you. Not only one thing, that is the best thing about CloudWatch, that what you could achieve from CloudWatch, hey, you could get logs, you could put your metrics, and you could get your events, and not only get it, probably I could visualize it using a dashboard which can be automatically created for me, so I don't have to worry about building my own complicated dashboard. A lot of dashboards are built into CloudWatch, and you could just get started from it, so should not be a problem. And you can get a unified view of your resources, application, and services that run on AWS, and this is important on premises also. So it's not like only for AWS, AWS resources you could use CloudWatch, but if you can install an agent, which I'm going to talk in a minute, you should be able to leverage your on-prem infrastructure also. So one dashboard and you get information about everything from AWS resource up to your on-prem resource. So that is all possible through CloudWatch. We will discuss in detail. Now, some basic concept which should be uh, which you should know about so that you would have a better idea on how CloudWatch actually works. Let's talk about that. What are some of the basic concepts which we have to be aware about? Let's talk about that. So, so metrics is one of them. Metrics is data about performance. Some example I have noted here that we have Amazon EC2 instant and it's a CP utilization. So that is a matrix which I'm looking into. That matrix will tell me how much I'm utilizing for my CPU. Then there will be event. CloudWatch can track your events also. Events are different than metrics. Event is something happening. Somebody starts a EC2 machine. Somebody stops a EC2, a EC2 instance. Somebody deletes a EC2 instance. These are all called your event. So events are 
also possible you could check that ec2 instances changing from running to stopping that's what we want to track that is called an event and i just want to track maybe i want to take some action action could be as simple as sending an admin an email or it could be as complicated as firing up a cloud formation template and then deploying a testing environment removing that machine from production installing it getting it ready into test environment and run some automation test on that so those all options are available once you start using alarm features and alarm can help you just to trigger a email or a complicated stuff which you could have defined in your own environment right so that's what cloud was basic terminology is we would leverage some of them as we move forward okay can you extract then make dashboard with quick site for example gustavo yes it is completely possible you will get your data right now, how you utilize that data, that is up to you. You could stream this information which you are collecting from CloudWatch to your own dashboard. Maybe you build that using QuickSight. Maybe you build it using Kibana. So it is purely up to you that how you are trying to utilize those information. Event is not counted with CloudTrail. Answer for that, CloudTrail takes care of your AWS API request. So it would be there. But what if I have a application which is very unique which is not inside my cloud which is not being tracked by cloud trail my own event which i want to track or maybe third party i have a jira application i have a github application i want to track event from there also and that's why we would be having cloud watch event and its name has been changed now it is called events bridge so that would help you in getting these things all right. Can we get previous sessions recording, Nafis? Yes, you can. Uh, we will be, yeah, here is a link. So on this page, you can find all the resources. And on the resource page, you would find all the links for the other links. Thanks, Vijay, uh, Vijay for sending the link. So that's the where you can find all the links. OK, so let me get started here about this particular service that, hey, what this service is going to do for us and how we would leverage this service to benefit of ours. So we will focus on CloudWatch. Now, CloudWatch collects something called a standard metrics. Standard metrics is a default metrics which is collected by CloudWatch. You do not need to do a lot of effort to get those metrics. Those are automatically collected by a system and made available to you. That's we call a standard metrics. If you want more granularity, you are looking for more controlled information coming directly from your application, right? So that time I may utilize a custom metrics and I'll talk a little bit more on the custom metrics part two, that how custom metrics will work. If I give you a simple example, if you have an EC2 machine, whether it's a CPU utilization is 10% or 20%, that would be detected by standard metrics. But within that EC2, if you have an Apache server running, and how much memory that Apache server is consuming or how many logs is being generated by Apache, that time you would be looking into custom metrics. So custom metrics are giving you more deeper insight, which CloudWatch standard metrics may not be giving you. And to work with that, what you would need, you would need to install a CloudWatch agent. So this CloudWatch agent is a piece of software like you install any software it is available for linux and windows platform and once you have this software installed this software can be configured to send its information to cloud wash service obviously it would be a secure channel you would need permission to get data from your application to CloudWatch like a role and once you have this data into CloudWatch you would start getting information and that information can be used for alarm or you may do anything else with that or maybe just watch it no problem at all on that so what scenario I am going to explain you I would launch a EC2 machine I would install CloudWatch agent in that and through that we would start sending some metrics to our cloud was service that's what we are trying to achieve now installing cloud watch agent can be done in multiple ways what i am going to do here to install this cloud watch agent specifically i am going to install it through a user data script probably everyone knows about user data script now so user data script helps you in installing something within your ec2 machine while you are getting that inform that instance ready for you so i would log into my console and from that console i would get started by deploying a ec2 machine and through that ec2 machine i would be focusing on installing this agent the script would be available we would make this available in the resource page and should not be a problem and you can obviously find user data script on amazon website to get this thing ready okay good so 
quick simple thing i want to install a ec2 machine with basic setting and i want to have my script also be part of it so let's go ahead and install this particular service so i'm going ahead and say hey i want to launch an instance okay what i want to do in that instance we will be installing the log agent and through that we would start collecting some metrics information from it i would connect to it manually afterwards and from there i would start accessing some of the data Hopefully everyone is following along. If there are any questions, keep them coming. We will we will answer it as many as we can as we go inside and talk about some other stuff. So give me a minute. Yeah, so I'm launching this. Let's call it test instance, test CloudWatch. Okay, then I have Amazon Linux that is completely fine with me. 64 bit x86 instance type T2 micro is also fine. Key pair. I want to log in, and that's why I'm using a key pair which I already have. Key pair is a combination of private and public key by which you can log into an EC2 instance. It's like an automated way of username and password. Network setting, I am keeping everything default. I am allowing SSH from anywhere so I could connect to it, should not be an issue. 8 GB hard disk summary information. And I am interested here a little bit on the user data section. So in this user data section, what I'm going to do, I am going to push that script by which I am able to get my agent installed. And it's not very complicated script. Let me quickly walk you through that. So what I'm doing here, I am updating that operating system. Then I'm installing Perl because the agent is returned in Perl and it requires Perl libraries. Afterwards, I'm going to the user directory EC2 user, which is a default user on Amazon Linux machine. And in that, I am downloading this particular zip file, which is actually the CloudWatch monitoring script or agent, you could call it. I would unzip it. And once my work is done, I would remove the zip file. I would have unzip version of my agent ready for me. And that is good enough for me. Let me get started here. So I'm launching one instance, which is EC2, having a user data script to get my CloudWatch agent installed. Okay, it will take a little time and we will then connect to it using SSH from Putty or any other client of your preference. It should not be an issue. And then we will see what kind of information we get from it. Okay, now one more thing. Default frequency of data collection for CloudWatch is five minutes. By default, it would collect data and aggregate data in every five minutes and display it on dashboard. That is called standard monitoring. If you want a little bit more detailed information, what you could do in that particular case, you could go ahead and say, hey, I want to enable something called detailed monitoring. Detailed monitoring will aggregate and display your data in every one minute interval. It's little costlier because we are doing little extra work for you in every minute. So you would be paying little more money once you enable detailed monitoring, but I would enable it because I would get my data faster in every one minute interval. I would start getting my information. That's what detailed monitoring is actually doing here. All right. So my machine is ready. It has got an IP address. Let's go ahead to this IP address and I would connect to it using putty as a service so we can access the console of it and we would start seeing some of the information as it comes into my application.